Good morning, everyone. I almost forgot to take that off. I was going to say, oh, 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 oh. We're still trying to get used to it, aren't we, after a year. Wow, a year. What a difference, you know, our lives have been and not realizing going into, let alone uh, in preparation for it, caught us by surprise, didn't it? At the same time, uh, there are things like um, uh, daylight savings time. How many uh, had to really work at, uh, at being here this morning? You almost forgot. You knew it was coming, didn't you? But, uh, or most of us did anyway. And, uh, you know, when Jesus returns, he tells us he's coming back. And yet, many, many, many will be caught off guard. And uh, we need to, as we think of Lent, it's a time of that spiritual preparation from Ash Wednesday to, to Easter. It's that time of spiritual preparation, of, of planning and preparing, but also examining that, uh, that we are where we need to be. We are on the right path, and we thank God for that. And um, uh, I think of a few verses that, that helps to prepare for that time. One is, uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I what? That I might not, yeah, right, sin against God. Or um, as I think of uh, Psalm 139, uh, verses 23 and 24, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Uh, Test me, examine me, try me, and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there's any offensive or wicked way in me, and lead me to the way everlasting. You know, that whole idea of preparation, because Jesus is coming back. And uh, uh, we know, uh, I think what's always interesting at times of these change, uh, changing of the time, that one hour, how many people will be coming in at a, at a different time, you know? And uh, I was looking at the earlier service to see if there was anyone uh, coming at the end, you know, at the end of the service, but them coming at the beginning of, of uh, thinking it was the beginning of the, next, the uh, early service. But we're here. We want to welcome those who are online also, uh, who are uh, part of the worship service this morning, that we would all be blessed together as we lift up the name of Jesus. And uh, we praise God for that. Uh, at this time, would you, uh, would you stand with me? That we might have a word of prayer and then our opening song. This is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we have every reason to be rejoicing. Now, we have all kinds of things in our different ones here. There are some good things that's happening in our lives, but at the same time, there are a lot of difficult things and in times of stress and strain and and there's sickness and there's also grieving and, and just a lot of celebrations and also difficulties that we want to, we want to come and the Lord says, welcome, welcome. I know where you're at. I want to help you. I want to give you that which you need. Please open your mind and your heart and your ears, and your lives to what I have to share with you so that you might leave here from here this morning feeling encouraged, feeling, uh, knowing that you're loved. And as this sign, little thing here says, oh, how he loves us. You know, he loves us so dearly, doesn't he? He cares about us, and he wants to meet us right where we're at, and he wants us to lay our burdens on him and allow him to renew us and encourage us and rejuvenate our lives. Let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for your invitation to come. Come unto you, O Lord. You welcome us. We who are weary, we who are... Uh, overloaded, overburdened, and you want to give us your rest. And, oh, Lord, and there are those who are are excited and and things are going so smoothly, and we come to say thank you and celebrate that as well. But we come, come as we are, and we lay ourselves before you, oh, Lord, and may we allow you to put your arms around us and encourage us and celebrate with us your presence and your peace. 
We ask and pray your blessing upon this worship service. We ask and pray this time of Lent, O oh Lord, as we do continue to prepare ourselves uh, for you and allow you to be what you desire to be in our lives. And we thank you and praise you and ask your blessing upon this time of worship. In the name of Christ, amen. Join with us as we sing. Open our eyes, Lord. Good morning, folks. Uh, Easter is coming, in case you are, were concerned that it was not. It is coming, praise God. There's Easter flower order sheets out there if you want uh, to fill them out. They're actually due by the 21st, which is the next week. So next Sunday. So please, if you want to get some, that'd be great. Um, we are doing an Easter egg hunt of sorts. It's going to be outside. It's going to be um, Saturday before Easter. Uh, we're going to make it shorter from about 10 to about 10.45, 11 o'clock. Uh, we have several different stations we'll be hooked up. We'll have asking everyone to park in the upper parking lot. So we can have the tables down there. Uh, so we still have a snack. We'll have crafts to go home with the kids. We have a lot of Easter eggs. We like to fill them with candy. So if you have some candy that is not open and half eaten... We'd love, and you're, you happen to find some at the store, you'd like to bring some in, we'd love to be able to do that. Uh, it's a great opportunity. The kids will be doing a story time, we'll be doing the egg hunting, and we'll be doing a snack. Um, and we'll have uh, some snacks and stuff for parents as well. But a great opportunity for us to continue to reach out into the community and uh, continue to be the church that, that God has called us to be. Uh, it's coming up as well. So if you are interested, though, it is because we're doing it a little bit differently, we need a lot of hands. And so if you'd like to be one of those hands on deck, uh, we'd love to have you know a little bit more about how to do that. Um, we'll have like, for instance, the, the, the smaller children will just be over here the whole time. So we're going to need some people that can stand there and say, hey, we're glad you're here. Hey, look, let's find some eggs. Here's a snack. We need some people that are willing to do that. And so if you're willing to help us with that, or even just hiding Easter eggs uh, up here for the older kids, that'd be great as well. So uh, again, it's going to be uh, on Saturday, April 3rd, from about uh, 10 to, like, we'll be done by about 11. So I'm not looking for a huge commitment. Come a little bit early. Uh, but if you can come, please let me know so we can get you connected with where uh, we can be with that. Um, we also do have uh, newsletters. Uh, I think most of you should have already gotten them or, or should be got it in the mail, um, but uh, it's great information. If you didn't grab one and say, "Man, you know, I, I have a friend that wanted to have one too." There's uh, in the back there. You can grab one of the copies. Uh, it is two pages, so there's lots of good information there, uh, including birthdays and anniversaries. And so, uh, and Chuck and Don are celebrating one on Wednesday. How many years? Forty-eight, 48 years. So, congratulations to you guys. And uh, and something that we, um, we we started doing this, uh, last week was we're going to try. To, uh, people with, with anniversaries, um, doesn't matter how many years, uh, we like to try to celebrate you guys. And so uh, there'll be some flowers uh, in the back for, for you guys to grab on your way out. Um, if, do not worry, you say, oh, my anniversary was in January. I have to wait a whole year for flowers. 
that's okay. There's some weeks where we don't have any anniversaries, so I'll be picking up on those people and, and trying to highlight them in, in, in marriage as well. So, uh, but of course, if you're not here, then I just give them to random people. And so, if you don't know, and, and if I don't know that you have an anniversary, if it's not on the official sheet, then I cannot give you flowers either. So please make sure if you know someone's anniversary coming up and say, hey, just make sure you know about this. Please tell me, and, uh, and I, we'd love to be on top of that to make sure that we can honor and celebrate uh, all that God's done there. Um, there is a weekly, uh, or sorry, daily uh, 2 a.m. devotion kind of things, and there's uh, Sunday school that, that I just posted this morning, and there's Wednesday night Bible, or sorry, Monday night Bible study tomorrow night, uh, 6.30 for those that are interested in coming out or tuning in online, and just great opportunities also for kids. So thank you so much for being here. Are there other announcements? Yeah, okay. Great job turning your clocks ahead. <laughs> I know that was a hard choice, but you did it. We have much to be thankful for, don't we? Yes. And a reason, too, is to come to worship as well, and that we have. And th th like I said, uh, this is the 14th, it was uh, the 15th, it was this weekend last year, so one year. You know, you see some of that on the, uh, on the news and stuff about reflections about what one year has held for, for us. And, uh, but we're, right now we're, we're in a kind of a holding pattern, and so what we, we keep continue to striving to do is that we remember all the past, but right now we're here. We're at this chapter of our lives, and we have to say, how can we make the most, most of it? Because each day is a gift anyway. We knew that, right? Each day is a gift from God to us. And so we want to make the most of it, not let's get out of this so we can go on as usual, whatever usual was all these years, and, uh, but to make the most of right now, to enjoy one another, enjoy the things, as Jason's saying, the have to do some changing for this, the worship services and various things we've had to do some changing. Sometimes a lot of grumbling and complaining and murmuring, at the same time realizing this, this is where we're at. So let's, how can we make the most of right now, today, this day, and tomorrow, and, and, and what can we do, what can't we do? And make the best of it and, uh, and allow the, the past to help us, encourage us, but as we shoot into the future, what God has in store for us, amen? And so he loves us and he wants us to make the most of us rather than saying, Oh boy, I, and, and, and we, can, we can get on that. Satan wants us to get on that, woe is me, you know. And, uh, and I'm, do you remember this years ago? You know what that is? Yeah, saying my heart bleeds for you, you know. The idea is that, hey, this is a day God has made. We want to rejoice irregardless. You know, do not be anxious. Isn't that what Paul says in Philippians 4? Have no anxiety. You know, but in, but in thanksgiving, we present our request to God. And so as we count our blessings and thank God, the offering uh, you know, container is back there, the offering plate. And uh, as we count our blessings, you know, think about it. Someone said, I, I remember I read it uh, this past week. It says, you know, even with our offerings, it says, uh, what would we do if, uh, if we strive to give 10% of, of what we, uh, we receive as far as time or money or and money and uh, to give 10%. If someone said, what if happened? someone had a dream and says, I dreamt that, that uh, I took 10% of 10 times what I gave in church. I gave 10 times. And uh, I wonder if I, had, I could live on that. Hmm. If you take what, what you get as far as from week to week and we multiply uh, 10 times that, you know, what we gave to the church, that, that would be our salary, that would be our intake. How would, we, how would we fare? How would we fare? How would we do? Our time too, you know, we, if we give a tenth of our time to, uh, to the Lord, what would happen if he would subtract that amount? Interesting that God has given us and we're, what's Paul say, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, I think it is, that we are stewards, we are managers of all that he has entrusted into our care because it's not really ours if we belong to Jesus, amen? It's all his. Yeah, it's all his. And so as we think of the offering, 
we want to offer unto God ourselves, but also our, our time and our, our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, dear God, for as we count our blessings, oh Lord, there are just so many, so many. The good times, the difficult times, people we are really, our hearts are, are really heavy for because they're going through some very difficult times physically and also many spiritually. Oh Lord, we thank you for your presence, your peace, your joy that you want to in the midst of that. The Apostle Paul says, in everything give thanks. And he also says, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. We have every reason to rejoice because of your provisions, O oh Lord. And we know that this is a day that you have made. This is the month you, you have, O oh Lord, as we reflect upon the past, as we reflect into the future. We know it's all in your hands. It always has been. And the, the more we put ourselves in your hands as well, the most we will, we will be able to get out of what you have for us. We ask and pray your blessing upon us as we give unto you our, our, um, ourselves, as we give unto you our tithes, our offerings, as we give unto you our time. And as may we lift it up, not because begrudgingly or have to, but because we desire to, because we love you and we thank you for all the special people you put in our lives as well, O oh Lord. But bless this time of offering, we pray, that we give unto you this day, and may we, O oh Lord, Receive, O oh Lord, the direction from your hand of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we have the children's story. If the children would come forward. Good morning, guys, folks. I'm going to tell you guys about a little adventure that I had. Have you guys ever taken any pets to the vets? Have you ever taken your pet to the vet? Did the pet want to go to the vet? No, usually they don't. In fact, they show cartoons of like the dog, like, hey, get in the car. Yeah, we're going to the park. We're, going to the we're not going to the park. Where are we going? Where are we going? And there's this idea. Well, I was helping uh, some friends. They, they had they, uh, the, these two like, granddaughters were moving their grand. They had watched, their grandma had watched their cat. Okay? And so they were taking the cat from the grandma's house back to their house. Now, obviously, the cat did fine in the car getting to grandma's house. Grandma lived in Westmont. They lived in Geistown. They said, our mom can't do it, though. Can you help us? And I said... Oh, sure. Thinking that the cat would be in a cat, like a cat little cage kind of thing. They said, oh, no. The cat does great in the car. It'll just sit on our lap. I said, huh, this seems like an odd thing. It did fine coming down. It'll be fine. It's with us. It's our cat. It loves us. Don't worry about it. Well, I was younger, so I didn't know a whole lot of ways to get to Westmont from Geistown. And you guys probably, that means nothing to you. But let's just say, I went the only way I knew on the road. But I think that the way that I went was the same road that was the road they take to the vet for their cat. Because about five minutes into the trip, this cat goes crazy. Have you ever seen those videos where the cats run around and jump on everything and claw things? That's what happened in my car. And I was driving, and I'm like, ah, ah, because this cat was jumping on me. We had to stop 14 times to get this cat controlled again. It was crazy. Now, wait a second. Was the cat with people that they trusted? Yes. And they could tell the cat, it's okay, it's okay. But guess what? That cat said, oh, no, no. On Saturdays, in the morning, sometimes we get in the car, we pile all the kids in the car and say, hey, we're going to go on an adventure. And Parks has gotten quite skeptical of adventures, though. He says, are we just going to go? In fact, last week we said let's go on an adventure. We drove to Altoona. There was a deal at Hobby Lobby, and my wife got all kinds of stuff. It was a long journey in the car and staying in the car for small children. It was a great deal. 
but it was a hard deal. And so we started driving that way, and we get to Evansburg, and there's a Wendy's right there, and he says, I've been on this road before. And his mind says, uh-oh. I said, no, no, no. It's going to be a good adventure, Parks. Trust me. And the thing is, you have to remember is this. Can you trust the driver? Because if, if Parks can trust, I said, Parks, do you trust me? And he said, I do, Dad. Now, there was skepticism. That's okay. I do. Because you know what we did instead? We went, instead, we did go to the little store that Mom likes. But we stopped at the Mallow Cup factory first. Uh-huh. Now, let me just, for those of you that don't know what that is, that's chocolate and marshmallow together. It is a glorious thing. So we get there, and he goes, this is not where I thought we were going. And I said, trust me, my friend, trust me. I'm driving you. We'll go to good places. You guys can trust God, too. Even if it looks like, wait a sec, are we on the way to the vet? Even going to the vet is a good thing for your pets, right? Because it makes sure that they stay healthy. We need to trust the driver. Dear God, thank you for these boys and girls and the fact that we can trust you into where you lead our next steps. Help us, the Lord, to hear your voice today and to trust you. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys can go right there and get some candy. And as they do, if you could stand with us and sing Build My Life. If you are not familiar with it, just read the words. They are good. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, name above every other name Jesus, the only one we could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my Holy there. 
Good morning. I really like that song a lot. Um, and I think that song was really, really the message as we go into this scripture to be thinking about, about the idea of, of building the foundation on Jesus. And, and for the people that we're going to be talking about in this story, they, I think they thought they had, but they found themselves shaken a little bit. And that's where, kind of where we jump into the story. So let's pray and, and, and we'll go. Dear God, I thank you so much for the opportunities we have to look at your word. I thank you that your word is what brings life and hope and healing. I thank you, God, that, that you are one who cares about us. Uh, that he who began a good work will carry it on to the day of completion, dear Lord. Praise God that you will. And we ask, God, that as we look at these two guys, Cleopas and the friend, that, that you help us as, as we might feel like we're in that same spot. Help us, your Lord, to hear your words and to hear your truth and be willing to do something about it. In your name we pray, amen. We're looking, as we continue with the surprises leading to Easter, um, we're continuing Luke chapter 24. And so we're starting verse 13. It says, Now the same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that has happened. And, and they talked and discussed these things with each other. Jesus came up and walked alongside them. They were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, faces, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem that does not know the things that have happened here in these last days? What things, he asked. <laughs> Tricky, Jesus. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and before all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. What's more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen visions of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they didn't see Jesus. Now, before we jump into it, no, this is the same day. Last week's message was about the guys running to the tomb, remember Peter and, 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 uh, and John? And the week before, it was about the women finding at the tomb. This is all the same day. It's as if God really wants, Jesus really wanted to make sure that they understood, hey, I'm back. Hey, things are different. Hey, you need to be paying attention to this, guys. Now, it's interesting to know, I mean, Psalms 139 says that he knows where we go and where we sit, before our, he is ahead of us and behind us. He hems us in. God knows us. And so it's interesting that he meets them on the trail. Now, it's interesting. A lot of scholars debate whether there actually is a town named Emmaus. So we have no record of it. Okay? But what doesn't matter is, is, they say it's about seven miles away. So you think about average person walks about three miles an hour, maybe four, if you're really excited. There's a limited time window here if they're going somewhere. But it doesn't matter where other than the fact of, or, or, but why they're going. They are downcast and upset, and they're getting out of Dodge. I don't care where I am, but not here. And it's interesting as we listen to these guys that we can see their pain. I mean, look at how they even refer to Jesus now. They didn't refer to him as the Messiah. They referred to him a prophet. They were still heartbroken. Now, the women had been there. They were part of the inner circle. They, they, they knew, they, they may have even watched him be crucified, I don't know. They, they, they knew what had happened. They knew that morning that the women had seen it. They knew that morning that, that Peter and John went to see it. They knew the stuff, and guess what they said? I gotta go. Now, maybe they were going home to work. Maybe they had work the next day. Maybe they had other stuff going on. I, I don't know. But what matters is Jesus met them where they were. Not just physically, physically walking beside them, but emotionally, um, uh, Jess Lair says, empathy equals your pain in my heart. And that's what Jesus was showing them. He was showing them that, hey, I understand that you're hurting. I understand that you're in pain. I understand you might understand what we're doing. <laughs> and some of us are like that cat that thinks they're going to the vet that is not in a cage. Let me just be honest with you. That is a ridiculous thing. I will never travel with a cat in my car again unless it's in a cage. Okay? We need to know. And a lot of us kind of fit in that same boat. We've, 
We've known the stories. We heard the truth. We, we know what we should know. And yet, there's that part right now where we're like, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm done. I, I, I thought that there was something going on. I've heard, uh, it's just too much. It's just too real. Is that us? Are we allowed to doubt? I watched a video, and in the video it says, now you know that uh, the birds aren't real. Okay? That birds are actually drones that the government has replaced over the last 10 years and that COVID started as a way to change the batteries in the birds. Because you think about it, during COVID, did you see a lot of birds? And people are kind of like, well, now that I think about it, I don't know. Now, this is false. Do not make sure we get this. This is false. Birds are real. Now, I did see another meme, though, that it said, I'm just going to point out, these are all the planets. These are all the planets with birds. Earth. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? But I'm like, no, that's, no, 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 no. But once you start mentioning that, you start thinking in your head, kind of, you know what? I know that's a ridiculous statement, but what if the birds were drones? Now, don't think that. If they're not. But is there anyone that it kind of creeps in your mind, like, next time you see a bird, like, is that looking at me? I don't know. There's that element of doubt that arises that when someone says, you know, uh, you turned the stove off, right? You're like, yeah, I turned the s- stove off. If you wouldn't have asked me, I would have said 100% I turned the stove off. But now that you ask me, I'm kind of thinking I didn't turn that stove off. We got to go back. We got to go back. I didn't turn that stove off. You get home and guess what? Stove was off, which is good. You should check another, if you're watching online, you should check if your stove is off. But we get that doubt in our minds. Doubt is not the same as unbelief. Doubt is that I'm wrestling with it. I'm wrestling. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm still searching for what God has. Now, when you give up and say, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I saw, I saw a little video the other day, and it said, um, and it said, it's Joseph and Potiphar's wife. And it's this little boy getting ready to wrestle this little girl. And the, the referee blows the whistle, and the little boy goes, and just runs. That is not doubt. That is unbelief. Running away from God. If you are wrestling with God, that's okay if you don't have all the answers. That's okay. It's okay for us to wrestle with God about things that, things that matter here and say, God, I, I, I want to know more. Because the thing is, if you keep searching for the truth, you're going to find Jesus. If you keep searching for the truth, you're going to find Jesus. Now, if you're not searching for the truth, if you're searching for your answers, well then you're on your own. Because the second point says this, as you look at this, the first one was Jesus meets them where they are. The second point is Jesus shows them, uses scripture to show them the truth. Listen to verses 25 to 27 here. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and then all the prophets, he he explained to them, what was said in the scriptures concerning himself? <laughs> Yet again, Jesus uses scripture. It's as if it's important or something, right? In Luke 16, 31, Jesus is telling the story about the rich man and Lazarus and how Lazarus ends up in hell. And he's like, hey, someone has to go warn my brothers. And this is what Jesus said in, in the parable in Luke 16, 31. If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded even if someone raises from the dead, rises from the dead. He said this in the beginning. And here they are, because Jesus is not going to be with them. It's interesting, you know, you look and say, man, you know, um, the quote I have, if God's word is what Jesus used, uh, where's my quote at? When they recognized until he, fellowship with him was not going to depend on their ability to see him, rather their ability to take him at his word. So Jesus didn't say, I'm just going to give you like a little keepsake here of me and our time together here. He says, I'm going to give you the scripture that you need so that when you go back to the disciples, you can tell them, this is why Jesus was the Messiah. This is why Jesus had to die. This is why Jesus has a plan for us. Scripture, because he says, you know what? I'm going to be gone. And when I'm gone, then I'm gone. But if you have this, 
then you can look back and see, ah, remember that, that's what we needed to remember here. So Jesus walks them through verse by verse, and it's not a wasted time, because you think, wow, so Jesus, you're going to show them all these verses, like that's really long. Or, hey, why don't you show us those verses, Jesus, then we can use that. We'll make little pamphlets, we'll pass them out, it'll be great. Jesus doesn't do that, though, does he? But he shows us that his word is the part that's invaluable. A couple quotes here. The first one says, Charles Spurgeon, Nobody ever outgrows scripture. The book widens and deepens with our years. Is God's word widening and deepening for you? Uh, Liza Turkic, Turk cursed, maybe I said that right this time, said, when the world beats you down, open up your Bible. Elizabeth Elliot says, The word of God I think of as a straight edge, which shows our own crookedness. We can't really tell how crooked our thinking is until we line it up with the straight edge of Scripture. If we don't open up his word, though, we don't actually get to see how it is or not. Helen Keller says, Unless we're in the habit of going to the Bible in the bright moments as well as the trouble, we cannot fully respond <clears throat> to its consolations because we lack the equilibrium between light and dark. It's not just the bad times that we need to go finding a verse of Scripture. It's the good times too. Remember to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. The Bible is, uh, Sorian Kurtzgaard says this, the Bible is very easy to understand, but we as Christians are a bunch of scheming swindlers. We pretend to be unable to understand it because we know very well that the minute we understand, we are obliged to act accordingly. I have had students tell me, don't tell me the rules, then I don't know that I'm breaking them. I said, That's not the... No. August, Augustine of Hippo says, the, scripture, the Holy Scriptures are our letter from home. Our letter from home. I remember going to camp as a kid, and we get there, and like on Tuesday, I already had a letter from mom and dad, and I'm like, this is amazing! I've been gone a day! How did this happen? Well, what happened was they knew I was going to camp because they were taking me to camp and they put it in the mail so that when I got there, I would remember how much they loved me and what, how they thought about me. It's as if God wants us to know what he thinks about us and where we are. And finally, John Wesley says, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven, how to, how to land safely on that happy shore. God himself has... Condescended, uh, yeah, condescended to teach us the way. For the this very end, he came from heaven. And he has written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. At any price, give me the book of God. I have it. Here is the knowledge enough for me. Let me be a man of one book. How can we be people of the Bible in this world that needs it so much? 1 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness so that the person of God can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God desires for us to be able to use this to be ready for what God has for us. Psalms 119.11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Psalms 119.105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God wants for us to be able to see what the next step is. He wants to walk with us until he reveals that as well. Because that's the third thing here. When the time was right, Jesus revealed it, right? Not beforehand. In fact, in verse 28, it says this. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, giving thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him as he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together, saying, It's true, it is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened on the way, and how they recognized Jesus when they broke the bread, when he broke the bread. Our timing is not God's. I am sure that if they had the choice, Jesus would have revealed himself from the very beginning. <laughs> Parks was showing, uh, we were showing pictures, and Parks had found these like fake glasses. They're just the rims, they're just black rims, and he put it on, took a picture of him. He's looking all kind of smug, and we we're showing Grammy. He goes, Grammy, Pappy, don't be tricked. It's me. <laughs> and we think sometimes we are disguising things, and, and, and yet God says, 
in my timing, I'm revealed that I've been with you the whole time. I've been here. Not just hiding in the background. Here, with you. To be encouraged, you know, the, and the lesson was finished. He taught them what they needed to hear. He challenged them to think. He met them where they were. He refilled their spiritual cups. He ate with them. And here we are. Here they are. Now, what do we do next? God knew. He goes, I'm gone because I don't want this to be about when I'm with you, you do. I'm not here. I'm not going to be here. I need for you to remember what we talked about. So I'm laying out all the stuff here in Scripture, these evidences, so that when I'm gone, you know. You can be reassured. You can be comforted. Because he saw where they were emotionally. They were broken. And a lot of times we get there ourselves. We look and say, man, God, where are you? We have to know that God has plans for us. And plans not just for us, but to work through us. By God, by Jesus investing in those guys, the scripture, they went and told the rest of the crew, right? And Jesus appears to the rest of the crew later, but they already had that knowledge, like, Jesus is alive. And so I want you to think for a sec. Um, the challenge is threefold. The first one is, um, are you needing Jesus to reveal himself right now? Are you in that spot of saying, God, I just, I need something here. I'm walking away from, I'm, har- I'm hurt, I'm I'm sad. I thought I knew, but here we are. Is that you? Needing to remember who's driving the the car. Or, number two, are you the person who needs to be walking beside someone who's walking out of town? There's a a ministry called uh, 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 an Emmaus Walk. And what they do is, uh, there's a gentleman that I was good friends with down in North Carolina, and, and he is part of his church's ministry. They would do this every year, and they would get uh, a couple people that would come with them. And on this walk, I think it's about seven miles long is what they did, they would share their testimony with the people that they were walking beside. As a way of saying, as we go on this walk, I just want you to know who I am, what I have been through, what God has done in my life, how he has gained victory. I want you to... I want you to see this and understand because that testimony that God has put in your heart is something that is not just for you. What he did for for Cleopas and the friend wasn't just for them. It was for the greater community, for the greater good. I mean, we we put the Neosporin and and, and Band-Aid on our finger when we cut it, not just for the finger, but for the rest of our body to feel better about our finger, right? It's, if one part is in pain, then we're all in pain. If one part's recovered then we're all feeling better about it if you're not sure about that next time you get a little paper cut just mm. and the third thing is this you know how how are we hiding God's word in our heart I put I printed off some scriptures out in the back um, I, I want to challenge you it's it's still Lent it's it's uh, better late than never we shall say but I want to challenge you memorize something memorize a verse a week I make my students memorize three. You know how I have them do it? I have them write it down on Monday, three times each. Write down the verses three times. You know what we do on Tuesday? Write down the verses three times each. You know what we do on Wednesday? Write down the verses three times each. Thursday, we have chapel. (laughs) Friday, the verses do. Now, not all of, it doesn't help everyone. Some people need to read it out loud. I, I get that. But my challenge for you is find some verses to be able to memorize before Easter, whether it be a verse a day, the, I'm just going to read one verse five times a day. Great. You putting your God's, God's word in your heart, God's word does not come back void, is what the Bible says. So I printed off some sheets in the back if you want to take one. If you say, no, I have my own, that's great, as long as somehow you're going to remember. Because we are called to be people of one book, as John Wesley said. How are we putting this in our lives? The last song um, we're going to sing here is His Hills and Valleys. And I'll be honest with you, on the way to church today, God kind of hit me upside the head and said, this is the song you should have sang. So I'm going to read you the lyrics to the song that you should go home and look up. Okay? This song fits great. But God gave me another one on the way here. It says, There's Another in the Fires by Hillsong United. It says, There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when we look at the space between, 
where I used to be and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. That's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire furnace, right? There was another in the waters holding back the seas. Think about the Israelites as they crossed the Red Sea or Joshua as they crossed the Jordan River. And should I ever need reminding or, uh, of how I've been set free, there's a cross that bears a burden where another died for me. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Uh, should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I know I'm not going to bow down to the things of this world, and I know that I'll never be alone. Um, and, the last line, and the last thing says this, I can see a light in the darkness, and the darkness bows to him. I can hear a roar in the heavens, and the space between wears thin. I can feel the ground shake beneath us, and the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. That's how close God is and wants to be with you. That close. And so as we sing this song about the hills and the valleys, there are times, there are some of you right now that are on the hills and you're saying, God is good. I'm loving this sunshine. I'm loving how God is just working in this. And there's others that are in the valleys saying, God, where? God is the same God of both and has plans for us regardless of where we are. Please stand and sing. Get there on my own when I'm walking through the valley.
praise you, God, that you are a God who is God of hills and valleys and all the spaces in between. We praise you, God, that you walk beside us. You know the pain. You know the, the heartache, dear Lord, and you care for us. Enough, dear Lord, to not, not just give us your, your presence, dear Lord, uh, for the moment. Just not, not just even the sight for the moment, dear Lord. You, you give us your scripture, your words, the truth that we can hold on to. And I ask, God, that you continue to encourage us as we hold on to your truth and your hope today. We also ask, God, that you would encourage us to be the people who, who memorize your word and who walk beside folks that, um, that maybe need to hear the story of how you have helped us. Thank you, God, for who you are and the plans you have. In your name we pray, amen. I also do have candy in the thing because you guys woke up and changed your clocks. Positive reinforcement is a good thing. And we do have scripture out there. Thank you for being here.